So about a year ago, I purchased this telescope on Amazon for about 100 US dollars. I actually really like this telescope. I found it effortless to use and it actually had some pretty great views. My son actually likes it too and he's seven years old. It's not that difficult for him to use. But what I wanna know is can it be used to take a picture? This is Learn to Stargaze. So the first thing we're definitely going to need to do is upgrade this mount. This should do the trick. To remove this telescope from this mount, all we need to do is loosen this knob. And it comes right off. All right, let's see if it fits. Perfect. So now we just need to attach a designated astronomy camera. This is a ZWO 294MC Pro and an ASI Air so that I can control the camera and the mount from my iPad. So all I have to do is screw this one and a quarter inch adapter into the camera and then fit the camera into the eyepiece holder on the telescope. Well, I don't really have a good way to attach the ASI Air to the telescope, so I'm just gonna use some green electrical tape. Perfect. Now we just need to wait until dark. Uh, hey Isaac, I want to show you something. So I, you know you have that black telescope you really liked? Yeah. The one you, that was really easy to look at Jupiter with? Well, I, I took it off the mount and I put it on this one. So I was going to see if I could take a picture with it. Is that okay with you? All right, high five. So we've got power. Let's turn the mount on. We need to turn on the red dot finder right here. And we need to turn on the ASI Air. Those, the ASI Air is expensive. <laughs> a little bit. This is the older model now, so it shouldn't and be too bad. And that's expensive too. Yeah, that's the camera. There's a whole different Wi-Fi for this one telescope. And we're just going to keep an eye on those cables. I can still see the cables. It's pointed in almost the right direction. That's actually pretty close. So we can see here a very out of focus Jupiter to the point that we can see the spider arms. All right, so I found a little 2X Barlow. I'm gonna put this between the telescope and the camera and see if this will help get focus. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna put a Barlow on the camera like this. This is 50 thanks to see with a telescope. You could buy it on Amazon, it really helps me find cool things. Whoa, there we go. Look at that. We had Jupiter and all four moons there. Yeah, that's almost in focus. You know, we can check the focus. We need a Batnoff mask. And when those spikes are equidistant from each other, you know you've got perfect focus. All right, so I hit finish. We were getting the fireworks, and now we are ready to take our flats. Now, our job right now is to tell the telescope what a pure white background looks like. So I'm gonna turn this all the way up, and what we need to do is take photos like this until, I'm gonna hit the photo button here. Hello? Yeah? Four minutes. Um, okay. We're gonna take 15 flats. Flats in place, press the button. 14, 15. All right, our flats are done. Okay, now we can attempt to take our first picture. High five. So what should we take a picture of? Let me pause this and we'll meet you out front. All right, so my wife just sent us on a trip to go pick up a rocking horse for the baby, but we're back and the telescope is sleeping, so we're gonna wake it up. All right, we just refocused the telescope and took our first picture of a star. And this is a picture of Deneb and wow, is it ever pretty. Take a look at that. Is that cool, Isaac? Yeah. All right, so we just took a few exposures of the Pelican Nebula, or as I like to call it, the Deadpool Nebula. Uh, except I used three minute exposures, which since we're not guiding here, is a little bit too long. So you, we can definitely see some star trails in the image, but we can see the nebulosities. 
Although, here's what this nebula looks like in my other telescope. I think let's move on to a different target and use a shorter exposure. All right, now we're gonna try a globular cluster. This is globular cluster M15, just loading up right now. That's not bad. That was a one minute exposure, a little bit of star trails. Um, so let's try to add the flats to that in a live stack and see what it looks like. There we go. We've got globular cluster M15. Is that cool? Let's let the camera take a few more exposures uh, and that way we'll bring out some of the detail in that cluster and then move on to our next image. All right, we just went back to M27. That's the Dumbbell Nebula. And this looks really impressive. So right now we've stacked seven 60 second exposures and got this really great image. All right, now we're gonna try M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. So we've got eight seconds left in our exposure. Isaac, can you count down for me? Three, two, one. Oh, look at that. That looks so cool. And then we've got one of the little satellite galaxies right there as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed this fun video on imaging with a $99 telescope. Please subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And remember, the future is looking up. Hey, Stargazers, just two quick announcements. The holidays are coming, and if you've got an astronomer, beginner or advanced, on your shopping list, definitely check out our brand new book, 110 Things to See with a Telescope. This book will not only help you find all 110 targets, but the Astronomical League and the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada will give you a certificate if you do. Details in the back of the book. And second, if I can reach 10,000 subscribers, I'm going to open a merch store and sell cool stargazing shirts like this. I even painted these moons myself. So if you're not subscribed already, you'll definitely want to do so. And remember, the future is looking up.